Hello, this is Vitualis the Chess Noob, learning and having fun with chess. So I recently played a game where my opponent surprised me on move 2. Did this happen? Well, as usual, I play e4, and they played e6, and I went, aha, French defense, I know what to do. Usually I take the full center with d4, and then they played c5, so a very Sicilian looking move. And I thought, is this some sort of uh, weird unholy union of the uh, French and the Sicilian? In this game, I actually did really, really well, and I won very, very quickly. So I had just assumed that this was some trash opening uh, immediately after the game. However, afterwards, when I analyzed the game, reviewed the opening, I came to really respect this opening, this Franco-Sicilian defense. Uh, and I found it so interesting, in fact, that I'm creating this whole video just to talk about it, even though I didn't actually play it myself. Let's have a look at it from Black's perspective. So move one, the French, move two, c5 with a sort of Sicilian looking move. And basically, it's, this is a solid opening and a very flexible opening. And depending here on, white, on what white does with the status of the pawn on d4, it transposes into a number of other lines. So one of the, um, one of the very good options for white here is to push the d-pawn forward to d5. Uh, and this now transforms into a Benoni type structure. Uh, Chess.com calls this the Franco Benoni defense. In other sources, uh, they kind of state the Franco Benoni and the Franco Sicilian defenses as synonymous. Here, probably the best response for black is to develop knight to f6, and basically chess continues. I barely know anything about the Benoni, so I'm not going to go into it much further. White is quite good here, but black definitely is okay as well. Going back to this position. Now, if white decides to defend that pawn by developing a knight, so let's say knight to f3, this now transposes into a Sicilian line. For the player with black in this opening, what they should do is just to capture. And if they capture, you know, the logical thing for white here is to capture back with then uh, to, is to capture back with the knight. And the very interesting thing here is, uh, in this position, black has very many moves. So both knights can develop. The bishop can go out to uh, a couple of squares. Um, the, the pawn can go to d6. Queen can go to a couple of positions. You can play a6. And in every one of these positions, it's perfectly fine for black. And when I say fine, I mean that black has an equal win advantage or maybe even a better win advantage than white. Overall, in this position, black has a win advantage over white. And that's both in intermediate uh, and beginner games and also in masters games. Very, very interesting. One of the other advantages of the uh, Franco-Sicilian defense is that the player with white who plays e4 most likely will not encounter this opening very often. This was the first time I saw it, and looking at the Lee Chess database, this occurs in less than 0.4% of all e4 games. And just your familiarity with the opening compared to white I think gives you an advantage. So a very, very interesting opening. Let's go back to the game I played. And in this game, I did in fact develop my knight to f3. So transposing now into a Sicilian. And this was where there was another surprise when I did the analysis. My opponent played what I thought was a completely sensible looking move, developing the knight to c6, so a very Sicilian looking sort of move. But if we look at the stockfish evaluation, this is automatically bad. In fact, one of the, um, yeah, quite a bad move, plus two, but yet a book move with a name, the Sicilian defense, open Franco-Sicilian variation, but it's plus two. Without this move being a gambit, without it being an unusual sort of aggressive push, it's just so interesting. I just found this so interesting that this could be a book move with theory, but you know, already plus two on move three. The message here is don't play that move if you want to play the Franco-Sicilian defense. One of the reasons why it's bad is that white can simply now push 
d5 uh, and that knight is in some trouble. So they can capture, you can capture back, so the threat is still there against the knight. And this is what actually happened in this game. Captures, captures, uh, the pawn now pressures the knight on c6. They play knight a5, so now the knight is out of the board uh, and nothing else has developed. I now develop my other knight to c3, so they're in trouble. My opponent plays uh, g6, which Stockfish considers a mistake, no, plus six and a half now, and I think part of it is about the ability to develop. You know, that bishop is still hemmed in, that bishop is hemmed in by that pawn, so there are problems, there are problems. Here I thought, why not make use of that open e-file and immediately give a check? Uh, they block the check with their queen, but I don't have to queen trade. Knight e4, and you know, there's some potential ideas here because any of uh, either of those moves comes with check. My opponent now makes a mistake. They develop their knight, but this, of course, comes with check, and their queen is pinned to their king. So after that capture, they can't, we can't trade queens, uh, and they can't capture the knight. So very powerful move, they straight up lost that knight, uh, and now plus eight, king now forced to d8. In this position, I thought I had to sort of uh, evacuate that knight, and that's what I did, which was still okay, but that wasn't even necessary, because um, they cannot take my knight with the queen. If they did that, I now have bishop to g5, which pins the queen to the king, and because the bishop is defended by the other knight on f3, that's a straight up loss of the queen. So I didn't even need to move my knight. Uh, I did so anyway in the, in the game because I didn't see that. They developed bishop g, uh, g7. I now play bishop g5 with that attack on the queen with a pin. Expectedly, they pushed uh, pawn to f6, but now I've got d6 attacking the queen, and my opponent here makes their final move. They move their queen to the wrong place, uh, hanging their queen, I take, and the game completes. They choose to resign. Good game, GG. There are two big takeaways from this game. One, the Franco-Sicilian defense is a good opening. And two, the Sicilian type lines are complicated and you need to know some opening theory to play them. I hope you found this video interesting and thanks for watching.